Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, one Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Dan Patterson had left his big dog, Shep, tied to a post on the main street in the town of Selkirk. The 17-year-old boy was in the general store when he heard Shep snarling and growling viciously. That's my dog. Dan rushed from the store to see a boy his own age poking and striking Shep with a stick. You, Pete! Stop that! I'll teach this mangy mongrel to growl at me. I'll knock his teeth out. I'll show him. Stop it, I tell you. Every time I get near him, he tries to snap at me. You wouldn't get near him if he wasn't chained to that post. Well, I'll put a bullet in that car, and someday I will. I'll fix it. Give me that stick. Let go, I'll bash your head in. My fun, you will. I'll teach you to beat my dog. Oh, oh you want to fight, huh? All right, you're asking for it. Oh, 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 the big dog Shep strained at his chain as the two boys rolled over and over in the snow. Shep wanted to take a hand, but the chain held firm and he could only bark and snarl until the fight was ended. Take that! <laughs> Finally, Pete, though larger, admitted to beat. Oh, I quit. I quit. Let me up. Oh, all right, Pete, get up. And let that be a lesson to you. You leave my dog alone, or I'll give you worse the next time. I'll get you. You just wait, Dan. I'll get you and your dog, too. I'll get square for this and see if I go. Dan watched Pete slink away, then unchained his dog and went home. Later, at the cabin Dan shared with his Uncle Jim, Chef watched from a corner as Jim fixed the cuts and bruises on the boy's face. Oh, no, that must have been quite a fight you had, Dan. <laughs> yes, Uncle Jim, it was. I'm afraid that cut will leave a bad scar on your forehead. I didn't want to fight. I don't believe in fighting, but he kept annoying Shep, and that was the only way I could stop him. No, don't ever fight, unless there's no other honorable way out. It's bad business at best. But if you can't avoid it, give a good account of yourself. I suppose so. But Pete was beat up worse than I was, and he had it coming. It makes things kind of awkward with me arranging to go north with his Uncle Jake. Have you decided definitely, Uncle Jim? Well, our claim here in Selkirk isn't good enough, Dan. They've been making lots of strikes up on the Klondike, and I think I ought to try it. Oh, I should have taken that job Annie McLean offered me at the trading post. It wouldn't be so bad off if I had. Do you think you could still do it? He asked me about it yesterday again. Well, Dan, I think you'd better take it. It'll take care of you while I'm gone. But you mean... You'd go without me? Jake and Butch said if I'd furnish a dog for the team and buy my own supplies, they'd take me. But why couldn't I go with you, Uncle Jim? No, sir, no. I'll send for you as soon as I can. And in the meantime, you can work for Andy and live in the back of this store with him. You, you said something about furnishing a dog for the team. Yeah, yeah, I had to promise that. I, I'll have to take Shep along with me. He's a good sled dog. And you couldn't keep him at Andy's very well. I hate to separate you two. You go ahead and do it if you think it's best. You're a good boy, Dan. If you were my own son, I couldn't be any fonder of you. Why are Jake and Butch going north, Uncle Jim? Well, their claim is Peter now, just like ours. Jake is leaving his nephew here to keep it going. He says young Pete can get enough out of it to feed and clothe himself, and he doesn't want to take him up north and have him on his hands. I don't blame him. Pete's no good, really. He's lazy. You boys being the same age, it's too bad you can't be more friendly. We used to see each other all the time until he started being mean to Shep. Yeah. Shep doesn't like him either, do you, boy? Uh, I hate taking that dog away from you, Dad. It won't be for long. I guess we can stand it, can't we, fella? Good old boy. It was weeks later that Jim Patterson, Jake Davies, and Butch Pearson arrived at Dawson City. Jim was walking along the main street with Shep when he saw a mounted policeman accompanied by a big gray dog coming toward him. The two dogs approached each other, stiff-legged and bristling, but at a word from their masters, retreated obediently. Hey, back, Shep, back, Shep. That's a well-behaved dog you have. Uh, Shep is my nephew's dog. Oh? 
My name's Preston. And I'm Jim Patterson. Just got up here from Silkirk. I aim to do a little prospecting. We're leaving tomorrow to go up along the Klondike River. I patrol that section. Some of the prospectors have been pretty lucky up there. I hope I'm lucky. I haven't got much of a grub stake. It's going to be rough sledding for Shep and me for a while. Gosh, Sergeant, I can't keep my eyes off that dog of yours. He's one of the finest looking animals I ever saw. I bet he and Shep would like each other. We'll probably see you if you settle somewhere in that section. Incidentally, an old friend of mine, named of Jed Summers, lives in a cabin on Bear Creek. Mm-hmm. He's leaving there in a week or so. Maybe if you dropped in on him, you might be able to stay in his cabin for a while until the weather gets better. Well, thanks for the tip, Sergeant. Would you mind telling me just how to find him? I'll draw you a rough map, Jim. Come over to the barracks. Gosh, this is sure nice of you. Come along, Chef. One king. It was thus that Sergeant Preston and Jim became friends. And Jim settled in the small cabin on Bear Creek near the abandoned mine of Jed Summers. The two men who had brought him to the Klondike from Selkirk left to prospect elsewhere. For two months, Jim Patterson worked in the abandoned mine, taking what little gold he could find, waiting for spring to come when he could pan gold from the streams. The days were getting longer, but snow still covered the ground when Sergeant Preston drove his dog team toward the cabin, past the point where Jim was working. Suddenly, the Mountie heard an explosion from the mouth of the mine. Okay, how are you, Huskies? Jim! Jim Patterson, you in there? Come on, King. Jim must have been hurt. Jim, Jim, are you in here? I'm coming. Where are you? Find him, King. And now to continue our story. When Sergeant Preston drove his dog team toward the cabin past the point where Jim was working, he suddenly heard an explosion from the mouth of the mine. He sent King on ahead and stumbled through the clouds of dust and rubble. This dust and smoke. Did you find him, boy? Good work, King. Jim, you hurt badly. That blast went off too soon. I, I couldn't get out of the way. Let me help you. Can you get up? I, I can't see my eyes. Are your legs hurt? Can you move them? I... I don't know. I... Yes, I can move. Good. I'll put your arm over my shoulder. I'll help you up. Oh, my eyes. There's a doctor at Pierre's trading post. I'll get you to your cabin first and then bring him over. My dog says right outside. Hang on to me. My eyes. Don't worry, Jim. You'll be all right. Come on, King. Jim lay on a cot in his cabin after the doctor had left. A bandage covered his eyes. And the Mountie was solemn and wished he could think of words to comfort him. This is bad luck, Jim. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Being blind isn't going to be any fun. It's a lucky thing for me you came along. I'd be out there yet. I'll try and get someone to stay with you until your nephew gets up here. I guess I'm in a pretty tough spot. Come in. Oh, Marty. Marty. Hello. Jim, something wrong? Me and Bucky. Nice eyes. They're bandaged. Is that you, Jake? Yeah, what happened? It was blasting. Had an accident. Sergeant Preston, these are the men I came up with from Selkirk. Jake Davies and Butch Pearson. Oh. Howdy. Glad to know you, Sergeant. How are you? Butch and I have been prospecting, but we didn't have much luck. Are you hurt bad, Jim? I'm blind. Holy smoke. Gosh, that's too bad. I'm going down to Selkirk. I thought maybe Butch could stay here with you till I got back. I'm going to sell my claim down there and see if I can get money enough to grub stake me a while longer up here. If Butch doesn't mind taking care of me for a while, it would work out fine. You could bring my nephew back with you from Selkirk. That would certainly solve the problem. I'd be glad to take care of you, Jim. Well, start making yourself at home right now. When are you leaving for Selkirk, Jay? I thought I'd take off tomorrow. Well, if Butch and Jake are going to stay here, then I'll leave for Dawson. I'm glad you're not going to have to waste any more time with me, Sergeant. I... I don't know how to thank you. That's all right, Jim. I'll be dropping in regularly until your nephew gets here. The following morning, before Jake left for Selkirk, he and Butch walked toward the mine where Jim had had his accident. Butch looked sullen. Why do you want to look at Jim's mine? You don't think I'm going to work it for him as well as play nursemaid, do you? You heard what he said. He blasted there yesterday. Oh, well, what of it? I want to have a look. I don't like the idea of having to stay here and nurse a blind man. I'm going to Selkirk with you. Ah, right, quit grumbling. You've been doing that all morning. Here's the mine. Come on in with me. 
I'm not going to work his wine for him, I'll tell you that. It's dark back here. Got a match handy? Yeah. yeah. There's where he blasted. Butch! Look at this! Oh, a match. Got another one? Yeah, here's another one. I wonder if I was seeing things. No, I wasn't. Look! That rock. It's yellow. It sure is. Jim uncovered something yesterday. And he doesn't know it. Some people have all the luck. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. We better tell them. Butch, wait! We're the ones who are lucky. What are you talking about? Nobody knows about this but us. If you bring Jim's nephew up here, he'll know about it now, Harry. Maybe his nephew won't come up here. But you told Jim you were going to bring him back. Nobody up here knows Jim's nephew except Jim and us. And Jim can't see. Well, what good is that going to do us? Sergeant Preston will be snooping around here until Jim's nephew gets here to take care of him. Yeah? As soon as he thinks Jim's in good hands, he won't bother us. If we could fool Jim and Preston for a couple of days, we'd be safe. Fool him? How? By bringing Pete up here instead of Dan. You mean pretend your nephew Pete is Dan? Yeah. Even if he is blind, Jim will know his voice. I got that figured out. We'll pretend Dan got a bad cold coming up here. Pete can talk in a hoarse whisper for a day or two until the Mountie leaves without being suspected. And after that? After the Mountie goes away thinking Jim is safe with his nephew, maybe Jim will have a little accident. Being blind, it shouldn't be hard to arrange. It might be worth trying anyway. Sure it is. Now, come on, let's get out of here and go back to the cabin before Jim suspects something. After Jake left for Selkirk, Butch worked alone in Jim's mine while Jim stayed in the cabin helpless. He was puzzled about Butch's long absences and questioned about it one day about two weeks after Jake had left. You going to be away all day again, Butch? I'll get back in time to get to your supper. I'll leave some food here on the table. You can eat this noon. Where are you going today? Uh, maybe to do some hunting. I can't stand sitting here in this cabin all day long. Well, I can't say I blame you. I don't like it much either. If Shep wasn't here, it would be even worse. He's company for me. Hey, I wish he could talk, though. <laughs> if he could, I don't think he'd say anything nice about me. He don't seem to like me much. Oh, you're just imagining it. Shep is gentle. He likes everybody. <laughs> don't you, boy? Well, I guess I'll push along. I'll see you later. All right. Here comes your friend, the body. He'll keep you company for a while. Sergeant Preston, good. Tell him to come in. Come here, Shep. Hello, Bush. How's that? Oh, Jim. Oh, he's a lot better. I'm going out to do some hunting. See you later. Oh, Jim, how are you? Uh, it's sure nice to hear your voice, Sergeant. I'm lots better, but I still can't see a thing. I'm king. Right there, fella. Uh, hang your puck up there on the wall. Oh, thanks. Nice and warm in here, Jim. What's taking good care of you? Pretty good. It's kind of hard on him being here alone with me so much. He goes hunting a lot. It's almost time for your nephew to get here, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. He and Jake should get here any day now. I'll be mighty glad to have Dan with me again. <laughs> <laughs> Shep will be happy when he comes, too. He's been losing for him. Yes, sir, I've heard you mention Dan's name. He ran to the door. He's been in here with me all morning. Hey, oh, oh. Maybe you'd better let him out for a while. All right. King can go out with him. Come on, King. <laughs> there you go. I'm glad Shep and King are friendly. They're two fine dogs. They seem to take to each other right away. While Sergeant Preston and Jim talked... Butch walked down the trail, debating whether or not he dared go to the mine with a Mountie so close by. Suddenly, he heard voices in the dog team as he rounded a bend of the trail. And he recognized Jake and his nephew, Pete. Hello, Butch! Oh, 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 oh. Well, you made good time. How are you, Pete? All right. How's everything going, Butch? Smooth as velvet. But I don't enjoy this nursing job. I got quite a bit out of the mine so far, but I had to be careful. Jim's suspicious because I want to leave him so much. That's just your imagination. I think this plan of yours is crazy. What if Jim knows I'm not his nephew by my voice? Your voice sounds enough like Dan's to fool him. Oh, it's huskier than Dan's. I told you to tell him you've had a bad cold. You've got to do it, Pete. This is too good a chance to miss. Come on, hold it a minute, Jake. Sergeant Preston's in the cabin with Jim. Sergeant Preston? You mean Amani? Yeah. I'm not going near that place if Amani's mixed up in this. Makes it all the better. Preston doesn't know Dan. You'll never suspect anything. Yeah, but what if the Monty starts talking about Pete's hair, how, how he the, looks? All the better. Dan has sandy hair just like Pete's, and they're about the same size. Well, this thing scares me. Everything I don't think scares you. But you 
You won't be too scared to demand your share of the gold after we get it out of Jim's mine. Are we going to stay here and mine it with Pete? We'll be mining it, but Jim won't know it. We're telling him we're leaving here in the morning. Then we'll go back in the woods and build ourselves a shelter. All three of us can work in the mine, and Jim will never know it. Come on, now. We've got to go through with this. Let's not waste time. It was just at that moment that King and Shep came trotting along the trail toward the dog team. Suddenly, Shep's nose lifted into the air, and the fur on the big dog's back stood up as he recognized the scent of Pete, the boy who had hit his young master. With a growl, he rushed toward him. Watch out, Pete! As the dog leaped for Pete, Jake suddenly swung the handle of his dog whip, striking Shep and sending him rolling in the snow. Uh, that dog, he hates me. That's Dan's dog. I'm going to shoot him. As Shep rose to his feet, Pete raised his revolver. Pete, don't shoot him. Oh, yes, I will. But at that instant, King sprang from the side. His strong jaws closed on Pete's mouth as the gun went off. Shep crumbled in a heap as King and Pete struggled. Let go of me. Get away. Get away, Jake. Kill him. Take him off. Get away, you car. Back, I say. Jake. What happened? Black King. Take him away. Black King. Oh, Let him up, I asked you what happened. Who killed Shep? Well, you see, Sergeant, it was an accident. Yeah. This is Dan, Jim's nephew. Dan, this is Sergeant Creston. That doggy has almost killed me. I want to know why. Well, you see, we were coming along, and all of a sudden that dog, Shep, made a beeline for Dan here. The snow was kind of dazzling Dan's eyes, and he thought Shep was coming for him to bite him. He didn't recognize Shep. I see. Your dog jumped at Dan just as he pulled the trigger. Well, Dan, I'm sorry. I know how you must feel about killing Shep. Shep? Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I sure do. I wouldn't have done it for the world, but I thought he was a wolf or something. You'd better go to the cabin right away and see your uncle. I'll take care of burying Shep for you. Maybe you better not tell your uncle what happened. It might upset him. Uh, I won't tell him. Yeah, we can pretend Shep ran away or something. Come on, we'd better hurry and get back to him. Will you be back, Sergeant? Why, no, I'm on patrol up here. I'll have to get on to headquarters. I was just leaving Jim's cabin when I heard the shot. It's nice of you to bury my dog. It's all right, Dan. Mash you, husband. As the man and dog team disappeared around the bend in the trail, Sergeant Preston bent over Shep. King looked on anxiously. Shep, old boy. Why? He isn't dead, King. You saved his life. That bullet just creased his head and stunned him. There's something very strange about this, King. You know... I'd never take Shep for a wolf if he were coming to welcome me. And Dan must have been expecting to see Shep. I wonder. I think we'll get the sled and dog team and take Shep to the police cabin with us until morning. Let's go back and get that team, boy. The following morning, Jim awakened when he heard Jake and Butch stirring about in a small cabin. He sat up and called out anxiously. Hey, Dan. Dan, are you up? Sure, Uncle Jim. <laughs> I've been up for a long time. Jake and Butch are getting ready to leave. Well, how's that cold of yours? Better? No, not much. You'd better not go out today, son. You stay here and take care of yourself. I'm not sick, Uncle Jim. His cold's made me hoarse, that's all. Is there any sign of Shep? Did he come back? No, not yet. I can't imagine why he'd run away. He never did that before. Uh, don't worry about the dog, Jim. He'll come back. He just took it into his head to go off on a little jaunt somewhere. He'll find his way home. Don't worry. I thought I'd go out and look around for him when Jake and Butch get off. Butch, you better take Jim some breakfast. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, don't bother. All I want is some hot tea. Just leave the food on the table and I'll find it later, huh? You two better get going. Hey, uh, Jim. Watch that. Don't spill it. Oh, thanks, Butch. You know what? It was nice of you to take care of me till Dan got here. I hope you have some luck prospecting this time. Oh, thanks, Jim. Guess we better get going, Jake. I'm going out with him, Uncle Jim. I'll be back soon. All right, Dan. Well, goodbye, Jim. Hope your eyes get better. Thanks, Jake. And good luck to you. Bye, Jim. Goodbye. Coming, Dan? I'll be back soon, Uncle Jim. All right, Dan. Don't worry about me. Well, put it over, all right. He doesn't suspect a thing. It's hard to talk horse like that. I don't know how long I can keep it up. I'll show you where the mine is. Butch and I can start working it right away. As soon as the Mounty leaves for Dawson, let us know. Get those packs on the sled, Butch. It was a short time later that morning when Sergeant Preston drove his dog team to Jim's cabin. Trotting beside his sled was Shep. As the Mounty entered Jim's cabin with Shep, the dog whined eagerly. Go on in, Shep. Stay outside. Don't be long, boy. Who is it? Preston, Jim. I brought a surprise for you. Hey, Shep, you found him. Come here, boy. Watch out for his head, Jim. He was hurt. Hurt? 
How? Someone grazed his hat with a bullet. Well, who would do a dirty trick like that? Uh, if I could only see. Dan will sure be pleased to see him. You said Dan raised Shep from a pup, didn't you? Yes. He brought Shep up north with him. What does your nephew look like, Jim? Oh, it's too bad you didn't wait here to meet him yesterday. He got here just after you left. He did? Dan's a good-looking boy. He has sandy hair and blue eyes. He's about medium height. Yes, I guess that's right. Eh? What do you mean? I mean, I thought that's the way it looked. <laughs> he resembles me a little. That uh, scar on his forehead is kind of bad, but I think it'll lighten up. A scar on his forehead? Yep. He got it a while back. But it don't show with his Parker hood on. He's a good-looking boy in spite of it. I'd like to meet Dan, Jim. Well, maybe you could find him around here somewhere. Why don't you look, Sergeant? I'll keep Shep here, and we'll surprise him when he comes back. Yeah? That's a good idea. I'll look around for him. You can probably tell by their tracks which way they went. He went off and put you Jake. I'll find him and bring him back. <laughs> Better come with me, King. This might be quite interesting. Yes, here are the tracks. Come on, boy. We're following them. Inside the mine, Jake, Butch, and Pete stood talking, a lantern casting their shadows on the low walls. You've done quite a lot of work, Butch. Getting all that rock and rubble cleared out. Now, it's hard for me to get away from the old man, but I did all I could. With three of us working, we should be able to clean this vein out without any trouble. If we can just keep Jim cool long enough. Hey, listen. Oh, the dog's barking. Well, likely a rabbit. Or Hello, boys. Dogs were barking at me. Uh, it's Preston. Don't touch that lantern, Jake. Quiet, King. Well, looks as if someone had been working this mine. Last time I saw it, it was full of rocks. I, I cleared it out. He thought Dan would want to start working it. That was thoughtful of him. And right here, he's been working it himself, and it looks as if he hit pay dirt. Yeah. Yeah, so he tells me. Does Jim know it? Well, you see, we thought we'd let Dan here tell him. It's, it's kind of a surprise. Oh, it sure is. I can't wait to tell Uncle Jim. Well, that's just fine. Let's all go back now and tell him. I'd like to, Sergeant, but Butch and me have to be shoving along. It's getting late. No, Jake, I want you to come back with me. I may have a little surprise for you, too. Right, now, we've we got to come on. You up. saw my dog in action yesterday. If I were you, I'd do what I was told. I, uh, I sure, Sergeant. We'll go back. Lead the way. You lead the way, Jake. King and I will follow. Jim sat with his hand on Shep's collar, waiting for Sergeant Preston's return. As he heard the men approaching, he spoke to the dog. Well, you wait right here beside me, boy. I want you right here when you see Dan again. Go on in, boys. You first, Dan. Oh, Shep, back for the... What's wrong with you? You better hang on to him, Jim. He wants to tear your nephew to pieces. Oh, that dog. I thought he was dead. Uh, who are you? King, watch those men. Stand over in that corner, Jake. You too, Butch. My dog is well. Uh, uh, what's wrong with Shep? I can't hold him, Sergeant. Well, then, why don't you go and pet your dog? No, keep him away. He isn't very glad to see you, it seems. That's because Dan shot him accidentally. He thought Dan wanted to kill him. That isn't the way dogs react to their masters. Go back your Parker hood, Dan. What for? Hey, that, that's not Dan's voice. Dan has a cold. Go back that hood. All right. Hey. Jim, hey. did you say your nephew had a scar on his forehead? Hey, sure, right along the top of it. But that isn't Dan. I can tell by his voice. And Shep must know. You're right, Jim. This isn't Dan. These men were trying to fool you because the blast had blinded you. Uncovered a new vein of gold in your mind. But what's it? They were planning to steal us right under your nose. Now get it now. Stop him. Get away. Take him away. All right, King. That does it, boy. Take him away. Don't let him get me. I'll talk. I'll tell all I know. Back, King. Back, fella. That's it. I'm putting all three of you under arrest. Sergeant. Yes, Jim. You'd, you'd better put Shep outside. What with the shock of hearing about my mind and finding this isn't Dan, I'm... I'm getting kind of weak. No. If I have King's leash, I'll snap it on Shep. There. Uh, if only that bullet had hit him between the eyes. It would have. That hadn't been for King. Uh, that dog of yours. Oh, yes. This dog of mine saved Shep, helped capture three crooks, and probably saved Jim's life. That's right, King. Thanks to you, boy, this case is closed. 